Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Leo Moon, on how to get the shadow to disappear with animated transparency. So to illustrate this, I have a simple scene that's set up here. And basically what I have is I have this torus knot um, that has this Lambert material applied to it. And then over the course of 20 frames, I have the transparency animated to make this uh, object be completely transparent. Now, I also have a spotlight here in the scene that's set up to cast uh, ray trace shadows uh, that will be cast onto the torus knot and then casting the shadows onto this little background plane here. So if we were to render out frame one, we can see that we're getting our nice shadows here being cast from the spotlight. And, but if I were to come in, I'm going to save this off and then let's come to frame 20. And now that our material is completely transparent, so the object should be transparent, let's take a look at what happens when we render this out. As you can see, we're still getting some shadows here, even though the actual object is transparent. So this is frame one with the uh, opacity set to um, with no transparency on the object at all. And then this is frame 20. Once we've set the transparency to full, uh, we're still getting some shadowing effect coming from that light. And if we take a look at the animation uh, from frame 1 to frame 20, we can see that we're definitely having an issue if we wanted to make this look like it completely disappeared. So let's take a look at how we can fix that. Now, the reason in this particular case that we're getting this shadow is because by default, uh, materials have a setting to maintain shadow attenuation, or the rate at which the shadows decay. So, uh, because we're using ray traced shadows, that's having an effect on our material. So, let's come in and select our material here. And if we come down, uh, we'll find an option for the ray trace options. If we go ahead and uh, kind of scroll down a little bit, we'll find our shadow attenuation. Now, by default, it's set to 0.5. So let's go ahead and set this all the way to 0, or turn it completely off, and come in and re-render this. So this was before, and this is after uh, turning off our shadow attenuation. We can see that we're no longer getting that shadow that we had before. So if we were to just verify this by simply coming in and let's do a quick batch render of these frames and compare that to what we had previously. So I'll come in to my render settings and I'm just going to add something at the end here just so we're not overwriting what we already had. Go ahead and set that up. All right, so now that our image sequence is rendered a lot, let's go ahead and hop over to our images folder here. We can open up the uh, fix that we've rendered out go ahead and open up the entire animation here. Just select the first one, hit open, and we can see how this looks now that we've turned off that shadow attenuation. So uh, this was previously, if we were to hit play on this one, we can see we have the shadow still showing up there. And on this one, we've managed to get rid of the shadow completely by turning off the shadow attenuation. Now, it's important to keep in mind that Maya isn't really a compositing program. So depending on your specific project, you may find that you get much better control over your fading objects by doing that in a compositing program. So to learn some great workflow tips for compositing, I recommend checking out the Beginner's Guide to Composite 2011 course.